Hi guys, this is Simon Stark and today we're looking at the periodic table and specifically the history of the periodic table. So firstly, we need to know that Dmitry Mendeleev was the person who developed the periodic table in 1869 and he was a Russian chemist. Now, he left lots of spaces for elements that haven't been discovered yet and most um, elements have been discovered now, um, however they are still making new ones. But now we need to know a little bit um, uh, a little bit more about elements. So firstly, everything is made up from elements and they're the simplest substances, but they cannot be broken down chemically. So a single particle of an element is called an atom and atoms of the same element are the same. Now, if you combine two, um, chemically combine two elements, then this is called compounds and all elements are the um, building blocks for compounds. Now you don't have to be two, it could be three, four, or however many you wanted to. So there are 94 naturally occurring elements and there are about 24 synthetic ones. So the theoretical total is 118. Now there are around 95 metals and 23 non-metals and I'll soon go on about how this is split up in the periodic table. And there are around 104 solids and two liquids and then 12 gases. So I said I would talk about how metals and non-metals are split up and this is what I will do now. So it's really quite simple in the way that metals are mainly on the left hand side and then non-metals are on the right hand side. Now the only exception to this rule is hydrogen which is right at the top in the middle. So then what we have to do is we have to split up um, at this invisible line which you can't see on here. However there is a green, there are greenish colour which starts at boron which is number 5 and finishes at astantine and all of these are called metalloids. Now this is because they touch this line which goes down quite diagonally um, and so they have properties of both metals and properties of um, non-metals as well. So for example if you see things like carbon, nitrogen, oxygen, fluorine and neon um, right at the top these are all non-metals whereas things on the other side lithium, beryllium, sodium, magnesium, potassium, calcium all of these are metals. So we also need to know about solids, liquids and gases and which ones are solids, which ones are liquids and which ones are gases. Now as, you, as I said before, 104, around 104 are solids, there are some debatable ones and some which aren't known such as borium, mitnerium and then Darmstadium which is at the, uh, at, right at the bottom. Um, but here m most of them and they're all on the left hand side again or however boron carbon all of those are also solids so 104 of them are solids now there are only two liquids and this is bromine and then mercury which is an interesting one because mercury um, is just not strong enough so it is a liquid at room temperature and then there are a few gases as well, mainly known as the noble gases, which are on um, right at the right hand side in group 8, um, helium, neon, argon, krypton, xenon and radon. However, there are also uh, nitrogen, oxygen, which is obviously a very important gas, fluorine and chlorine. So, and then hydrogen, of course. So all of these are gases, but most of them are solids and I, obviously I can't go through them. But then we, we also have the transition metals and the transition metals are one right in the middle of a periodic table. So it goes up in here from group 3 to group 12. So from 3 to 12, all of those are transition metals. So now we need to know a little bit about the groups. And in group 1, these are the unstable um, elements, the ones which have one element to lose. And we need to know a li little bit about this structure. And they will have one element on the end, which means they have to lose one element. Now, um, francium is the most, that's the most um, unstable atom. Um, uh, we, you also know that potassium is very unstable, um, cesium, sodium is quite unstable. But all of those are the most unstable. Then group 2 means they have two elements on their outside shell and this means they have two elements to lose. So things like calcium, magnesium, all of these. Then we have to skip out all of the transition metals that they went on before to get to group 3 which is on here it says 13, so number 13. And this is group 3 which means they have three elements to lose. And they have three elements on their three electrons sorry, on their outside shell. Then we have group 4. 
um, and this is carbon, silicon, and they have four elements on the outside shell. Then it starts to change a little bit, and in which starts with nitrogen, in this is group 5, but this means to get a full outer shell, they have to gain three electrons. So this is why nitrogen could bond with something like boron, because boron has to lose three electrons, and nitrogen has to gain three electrons, and it could bond easily. Then we have in oxygen, this is in group um, 6, and they have to gain two electrons. Then fluorine has to gain one electron, and all of those in that line are in group 7. And finally we get the noble gases, which have a full outer shell, which means they're very stable. Um, and all of these gases are extremely stable because they don't have to gain or don't have to lose any electrons. So argon, neon, helium, all of these are extremely, um, extremely stable. So, thank you very much for watching this video. I will do a video soon on the properties of non-metals and properties of metals. But for now, thank you for watching and see you soon. Bye.